Uh, and we do have a lot of legacy bosses. Is there any boss that when you're seeing it played or you're playing it yourself uh, that you're just like, oh boy, I wish we can go back and uh, update this one. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Forge in Eternum, where we talk all things New World. My name is Dave, and today we're going to be talking about AI bosses. Today I'm joined with uh, our AI lead, Chad Redwitz, and our AI designer extraordinaire, Patrick Smedley. Uh, one of the first questions we have for Chad, um, can you just kind of take us over a brief overview? How do you create a boss in New World? Sure. So uh, the process generally starts with a discussion with our narrative team uh, to kind of get an understanding of the story that we're trying to tell both in the expedition and in the world. Uh, and then also a discussion amongst the designers about kind of the, the gimmick that we want to, to present to the players. And that's, that's kind of the unique mechanic uh, and the, the experience uh, that we want to provide to the player. Um, and then after that, we kind of get into uh, designing the specific roles that we want to uh, have the players doing through the fight. And, uh, and looking at kind of our, our escalation mechanics. Um, and uh, that's really there to, to make it feel like you're, you're climbing a mountain a little bit fighting this boss. Uh, that's getting harder and harder, and uh, it's, it's leading up to this ultimate moment against them. Uh, I always love it when uh, a boss fight ends with players just barely scraping by with a tiny little bit of health left, uh, half the team dead, and then they, they triumphantly conquer the boss. So. Um, I always love those kind of moments. Uh, and then as we're building it out, uh, you know, we start implementing, uh, we play test a ton, and uh, we do a lot of iterating because sometimes you, uh, you write something down on design and it just doesn't work out in practice. So, uh, so you, gotta, you gotta adjust on the fly and, and find the fun in the fight. So, and that's, that's kind of our, our general process. Um, but uh, to talk about a little bit more, uh, Patrick, would you like to kind of talk over a, a recent boss design that we had? Yeah, sure. Uh, so one of the more recent bosses I implemented was the uh, Goliath of the Ennead, uh, the kind of pinnacle fight in the Ennead expedition uh, that launched with Brimstone. Uh, that fight, as a lot of our players probably know by now, is a two boss fight. So you have the, uh, the Brute and then you have the Horus boss uh, and they both kind of play very differently. So with that boss early on, we knew that we wanted to kind of introduce each boss separately. So players had an opportunity to learn the core mechanics of that boss. Uh, so we introduced the, uh, the Brute first to the players. He has this really kind of big charge attack where he'll run towards you and you need to, uh, as a player, kind of kite him into the obelisk in order to stop that or else you're gonna find the arena is you know, filled with uh, fire. Um, and then after you take him down, then the Horus kind of joins the fight. He has a lot of his lasers, uh, his kind of roving sun discs, a lot of ways to hurt the player. Then his core mechanic, the uh, activation of the four obelisks where each player needs to get in there and turn those off with their Azoth staff. Uh, that mechanic was you know, pretty challenging to implement. There was a lot of timing uh, issues we ran into, so that was one we uh, iterated on a lot, like Chad said. Uh, I think the kind of core combat that we got out of that mechanic ended up being really fun. Uh, as I'm running this, when I'm playing the game, you see players really identify that this attack is coming. Everyone kind of just hauls uh, their way over to the obelisk to turn those off as soon as they can. And if you mess up the timing there, that's gonna make that move just hurt a lot. Um, so really happy with how that turned out. And now what's really exciting there is when both of those bosses die and they come back to life, that third phase of the encounter that's just like pure chaos and watching players kind of navigate that has been fun. Um, that was something we iterated on a lot during development because we had a lot of bugs uh, with the revival of the bosses and them not coming back when we'd expect or coming back with too much health or too little health. So once we finally nailed that and got that in a good space, I was pretty happy with it. Yeah, it turned out fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it was great. It really showed and also gave people in the group something to do. They wasn't just sit there and yeah, hit the yeah. boss. You had to go and do an actual role in the, in the fight, which is something we've started to lean on a little more in our newer uh, boss fights, which is really exciting. Uh, just uh, some other questions from the community, uh, maybe. That's, uh, what's the hardest boss fight we have? So right now, recency bias, but the encounter that has the most uh, player kills is the Goliaths. Um, groups are averaging around six wipes on that boss before they successfully take it down. Uh, but some of our legacy bosses, uh, Olivia Marl, the caretaker, actually still remains one of the most deadly bosses in the game. Uh, there's the eternal debate among players of, do we send everyone into the root cage immediately to take it down, or do we send in the tank and everyone else kills the adds? 
Um, for everyone who thinks that we should send in the entire group, um, I personally think you're wrong. Let's play it safe and just send in the tank while everyone kills the ads. But uh, that debate, I'm sure, will continue for a while. Uh, and we do have a lot of legacy bosses. Is there any boss that when you're seeing it played or you're playing it yourself uh, that you're just like, oh boy, I wish we can go back and uh, update this one? <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm blinking on the name now, but our, our torso Chartus. boss. Chartus, there yeah. we go. Uh, he could definitely use a, another pass, perhaps. So um, he's definitely one of our earlier bosses. Uh, we learned a lot from it. And uh, yeah, maybe one of these days we'll kind of circle back. So and, you don't want to just do this? Well, you know, just, you know we'll just a little bit know. more, a little, a little more uh, mechanics, a little yeah. more role action there. Um, but uh, yeah, maybe one of these days. I do think that boss though highlighted something really cool with our process, which is kind of the iteration and the collaboration we have between a lot of disciplines. Uh, when we initially designed that boss, we had his swipe attacks, but you had to run outside of the arms to get around it. And then our concept team came back with this really cool concept and this energy cracking between the arms and the broken bits. And our animator, Shogi, looked at that and goes, why don't we just break up the arm and make you run through it instead of going around it? And I think that is one of the cooler parts of the fight. And that entire mechanic came you know, from an animator looking at a piece of art going, this would be cool. Yeah, that's, that's totally true. And it's um, the, the creation of a boss isn't really a linear process. Um, like I was saying, we, we might start with, you know, looking at the lore or looking at a gimmick, but a lot of times our different departments inspire each other to do something else exactly like that. Like the animator uh, wanting to break up bits of the arms or, um, or somebody noticing that, you know, that, that barrel on the guy's back, maybe we could turn that into an attack that he grabs and throws and have it explode. So uh, there's tons of room for, for kind of development beyond just the initial concept, and it leads us to some really fun places. Uh, so we, can we talk about like our pipeline for how we get a boss from concept all the way out to our players? Yeah, sure. So uh, it, the process generally starts with uh, our, our initial kind of design, our pitch as we call it, um, to other designers and our product owners um, and our narrative team uh, to kind of get buy-in on it. And if everybody's uh, excited about it and they want to progress for it, um, then we, uh, we do our formal write-up and we start uh, uh, passing it on to our other team. So that includes our, our artists who are, are building the model, our animators who are, who are coming up with the unique animations, uh, and the, like our intros and deaths and stuff that's, that's unique for the character. Um, and then our design team uh, starts iterating on the, on the design, uh, prototyping things out, building out the abilities and the interactions. Um, and, and that progresses until we get to a kind of a playable state, and then we start doing our, our initial play tests and, uh, and just kind of really digging into feedback, uh, figuring out what's fun, what's not working, what we kind of want to lean into even more. Um, and that progresses for, for a good long while until we kind of reach a, a nice solid state um, to where we can pass it on to our, our kind of finalizing teams, which are uh, VFX and sound. Uh, and uh, and they'll you know they'll come in and they'll they'll polish up all the VFX and make it look beautiful, uh, see the character in the environment itself, adjust lighting or any kind of ambience that we want to do, um, and and really kind of bring the character to life. And then uh, and then after that, our QA team just hammers the heck out of it to try to find all the bugs, uh, exploits as we can find them. And, uh, and just anything that might break or kind of go wrong that we're, we're just not expecting. Uh, and that, that progresses all the way until we release it. And then, uh, and then yeah, and then we hopefully end up with a, a great product and a fun time for, uh, for the players. Yeah. Do you have a favorite part of that kind of development process where you feel like it just gets to like be the most fun for us as designers? Uh, man, so uh, I, as a designer myself, I, I love uh, just building out the character and seeing it kind of come to life in front of me. Uh, we start out with a lot of individual pieces, almost like building blocks, and, uh, and we might get individual ones working, uh, but then getting them all together and seeing our phases kind of flow together uh, and develop, and then obviously iterating on it and kind of uh, uh, adjusting it to, to really lean into the more fun aspects. Uh, seeing that through is great, and then there's usually a little bit of a gap between when we're done implementing and when we see it again after VFX has made their pass. Um, so we start with this thing that's you know we're really excited about, and we think, wow, this looks great, and then we see the final product, and it just looks amazing after VFX and sound have done their pass, and uh, I really love that moment too. That's that's really great. 
yeah, it's always really exciting. Like with Nitro Tune, when we were playtesting it uh, with our design group, you see all these kind of white circles popping up and it's, it's cool. You know the core mechanics there are fun and challenging. Then you take that look two months later and the VFX artists have plugged in the fire and it goes from, this is cool to, holy crap, this is incredible. I'm gonna have so much fun playing this over and over again. Uh, speaking of awesome bosses, does anybody have the most exciting boss in the game? Who, who would you say that exciting is? Exciting boss. Uh, probably one of my favorites is uh, Nishtun, our, uh, our corrupted Naga. Um, I always just, I, I loved how that boss turned out. Uh, I think visually he's stunning. Uh, there's a lot of really fun interaction with the corrupted cores that you have to take care of, as well as the uh, the vents that are that are blowing up. Um, I think just all around that that fight just really came together really well. Yeah, I, I agree. That was a really fun one for us to design. Uh, we went back and forth with our VFX artists quite a bit on how we're going to sell the visual language of these mechanics, and the place it landed in is great. Uh, the vents when they are charging up and then about to unleash their power, you can really tell kind of the timing of how much time you have left to get out of that area. Uh, as well as just like kind of the raw power they have. Um, and the time of day shift too, when you're standing in it and it gets a little bit darker, really kind of reinforces that tell to players that like, hey, you are not standing where you need to be. You got to get out. I was a pretty big fan of the Admiral. I thought he was fun. He had a lot of different phases to him. He had to interact with the cannon and all the cannonballs shooting down on you and he's jumping up to the higher levels and you're knocking him down. I thought there was some pretty interesting uh, stages in that fight. So I think he was one of my favorite right now. Yeah, for sure. That was a serious gimmick fight right there. We did a lot of uh, unusual things in there with the hopping in the cannons and uh, the boss jumping to the, uh, the second story. Um, uh, that did turn out pretty great. All right, and that brings us to the community question. Uh, we wanna know, What's your favorite boss and why? What mechanic about it? What, what is the reason that you like it so much? Is it the stages or is it uh, the different roles that the players have in the fight? We'd love to know. Uh, so uh, if you wanna see more of this, please subscribe and we'll be happy to come back and answer all your questions. See you later. Bye.